Hello, welcome to another episode of Rahalastapa. This week with the fantastic American comedian and actor Mary Lynn Rice Cub. Uh, this one was recorded uh, the day before uh, I was having a operation, which you will hear about uh, in the podcast. Uh, everything is going okay. Um, I'm recuperating well and uh, everything seems to be fine. So fingers crossed on that one. Thanks to, for all your lovely tweets and messages about not wanting me to be dead. I will do my best to carry on living. For you, just for you, not my family. I don't care about them. Um, and you can watch these most Wednesdays on twitch.tv slash RK Herring. Uh, we'll also, once I'm fully recuperated, be back to doing snooker and Twitch of Fun Series 2, which hasn't been fully commissioned yet, but I'm hopeful we'll be returning at some point very soon. Uh, don't forget to subscribe on Twitch if you can. If you're with Amazon Prime, you can give us money for free or just follow me on Twitch and you'll get notifications every time I'm live. Sometimes I do surprise stone clears and all kinds of things on there. Remember, gofasterstripe.com slash badges if you would like to give us some money every month and get some nice things in return and some extra bits of video. Anyway, let's sit back, relax and enjoy Ra Ha Last Up Ha with me, Richard Herring, and my guest, Mary Lynn Ricecup. Hello! Please welcome a man who's... 12 hours away from an operation. It's Richard Herring. Uh, welcome to Richard Herring's live stream transatlantic podcast. Uh, though I was hanging around with uh, all the players in the South Plains Snooker Federation on Monday. They call it Rahalas, but I don't know if that's going to catch on. My guest uh, I've been talking to before the show said uh, she watched the South Plains Snooker to get an idea of who I was. I don't think that's the starting point for uh, Richard Herring. I think the first, second round, first matches of the. After fit 12 years, probably not the starting point. But there we go. She's still here. And that's all that's important. Uh, yes, uh, look, it's all uh, it's all happening. Um, it's uh, my last day in one piece. Tomorrow I will be in two pieces, hopefully one quite large piece and one smallish piece, though it's bigger than it should be. Um, I'm losing a part of the body that uh, human beings have slightly less than one of on average. So I don't know if I can afford to lose one. It's a big deal to lose it, although I will be left with one. So that leaves I, I'm still left with slightly above average. Um, I haven't directly said what this is yet. I will talk about it more. There's a lot of material in it. You should be able to work it out. Uh, I probably will say in a second. Um, and I was wondering, my, my daughter's about to lose one of her front teeth. And, and obviously the tooth fairy comes. Is there a fairy for everything that you lose? If I, if I get to take this home with me and put it under the pillow, will I get some money the next day from... From a fair, well, is there a fairy for that? I mean, it's rarer. There's so many teeth in the world. There's not that, not many of these come out, is what I'm saying. I'm all right. It'll be, it's fine. It's nice to have this distraction <laughs> away <laughs> from thinking about it. Uh, and also, this, uh, is there a bollock fairy? That's what I'm, yes, it's, we went. Right. Uh, we've also, I've also been watching uh, Back to the Future with my kids for the first time. And they're six and three, the three year old still kind of quite liked it. Uh, it's, you know, I'm, I'm interested in time travel stuff and the logic of time travel, uh, and it stands up quite, quite well. My main plot defect, having watched all of Back to the Future again recently, and I've probably said this before, is the uh, Almanac, the Sports Almanac 1952,000 that appears in uh, Back to the Future 2. Is it just me, or is that a little bit slim, that volume of 50 years of sport that includes college football matches, right? So for 50 years, it's got all horse races. It's got all college matches. Uh, old Biff manages to find the page very quickly for the... So it can't be tiny writing. Um, and I think it's small because it has to look like it's a porn mag later on, doesn't it? And if if it had all the sports results in it, then it would look like Biff was, you know, wanking off to a, a phone book. But uh, it spoils the whole thing for me. Uh, and look, there's, there's this is how... Look how thin it is. There it is. It's like that. Paper thin. That can't have all... And also, 
once Biff's won some money and it, that will change history and all the other sports results will not come out the same, certainly once the dystopia has happened. Come on, Back to the Future. Let's remake that film and make it properly. Um, right, look, we're going to crack on. We're going to crack on. Um, better than the snooker, wasn't it? It was better than the snooker, that bit of stand-up. So um, my guest today uh, is probably best known for her appearance as an Oompa Loompa in a community theatre production of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. That's why we're all watching tonight uh, to see that. Uh, will you please welcome the amazing Mary Lynn Rice Club, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, uh, oh, which one do I, oh, both there. I suppose. Hello. Hello. How Hello. are you doing? <laughs> it's lovely to see you and lovely to meet you and lovely to talk with you immediately about my testicles. So uh, nice to meet you and thank we're, you. We're, we're very close now that I know about the <laughs> testicles. It, do you want to, do you need to describe them a little bit further? Just well, one of them, a... I mean, do check your bits is the, uh, uh, luckily I have, was checking my bits, but mine's, usually there's lumps and bumps and stuff. Mine's mm. just quite big and hard uh, uh, and it's oh. it's in the, it's in the middle, so uh, there's no there's no lump and bump. Wherever it is, is in the middle. The only way, Mary Lynn, to find out <laughs> what it is, the hard is to take it. candy is in the middle. How it many is. licks you gotta take, can you do? You got to take it out, and then you can have a look at it. And you know, if there's nothing wrong, they'll go, "Oh, sorry." Oh, but it's it, a tootsie roll that would be in the middle. <laughs> it could do, you, be. do you know those lollipops? You lick uh, it. Yes, until I, you I'm get aware to the, of them. Yeah. But it wouldn't yeah. be hard. It would be the reverse. No, so. It, they were very good. We have a thing called the NHS here uh, in the UK, which uh, will treat you for no extra money. You don't and have to be in my face about that. I get it. You guys uh, okay. have health care. I get it. Yeah. But did you because, notice it or did you have to go to the doctor? And I noticed have... it. I noticed it. And then I thought, I thought I'll ring the doctor. And I went to the doctor and the doctor said, don't worry, it's nothing. But we'll send you to the hospital to get checked out anyway. And then the woman at the hospital said, uh, it isn't nothing. There's something in, There's something lurking in there. What it's if quite, it's a quite, diamond? What if you're making be, diamonds? <laughs> what if it's just a very big sperm? That's what I think. What if it's just, I'm like, oh, they're, they're, no. it could be just be a really gigantic, it's eaten all the other sperm. Was that like a total male, female? I wanted it to be a diamond and you wanted <laughs> to be sperm in there. I wanted it to be a, a, a fish. Look, I've, I, this, I've got this coming to me. I've done so many jokes about genitalia in my life. I did a joke about imagining having a, a, a sperm the size of a trout. So you know that would be it would be payback if that happened. Nearly, I I think I'm in Inception now. This it's is a true. super strong sperm in there going. Let me get me out of there. Like, <laughs> I'm ready we're to gonna go. get, we're gonna get him out, uh, and it'll be probably be fine. So let's not worry about it. Um, You're gonna be great. <laughs> but, You're gonna do but great. What, but thank you for coming to talk. Coming to take my mind off it uh, the night before, though we seem to be mainly talking about it. Um, but that's okay. Uh, do you remember being an Oompa Loompa? That's the uh, in Willy Wonka in the community theatre. I'm, I'm imagining you were a child, but it'd be great if you were sort of 28 when you played it. I was 42, yes. <laughs> I was <laughs> 42. My mother had to sew. She didn't have to. She did. She was a nice mom. Still is a nice mom. Um, a satin pink, the uh, the fashion, what's it, what, the costume design, that's what they call that in, in showbiz. Yeah was little overalls with knickers, so just below the knee in pink. And then you had to have a striped shirt underneath. And, you know, it was a pretty progressive, so they did not put us in uh, Oompa face. We went okay, with our good. own natural skin color. That's good. And I remember just lining up. I was very young, and then we had to recite because I think in the play it's like a long poem. So, so you had to do two lines of the... Of the Oompa Loompa, thank you for asking. I do remember it very well, Good. very fondly. Good, because his role Dahl's become a bit problematic in uh, recent years. Have well, you? things Why? have come out of it. He's he was very anti-Semitic. So, and and the Oompa Loompas are as well. I'm glad that you were a, you know politically correct version of the Oompa Loompas, but the Oompa Loompas are, it's a little bit dodgy. A man capturing lots of pygmies yes. in a Yes. In a jungle and bringing yes. them back to from, work from in a factory. From the get-go, this was a bad <laughs> idea. And then the casting just n nailed the idea home. Well, but look, you know, you, it, can't hate, you can't hate Gene Wilder, so you just... I don't. I don't hate you. Can't, so I mean, you, you can't hate Willy Wonka. That's right. I mean, so you're horrified at the Oompa Loompas, and then, then instantly you're like, hey, it's fun. They're fun. They love it there. 
Good. I think we might be having some audio problems, but I think it's only for Twitch. So I, as long as we can hear each other, I think we're OK. Wow. Someone um, just took a crap on Twitch. Doesn't care yeah, about Twitch. Doesn't, don't care about Twitch. Well, if they can't hear us, especially. Um, Chris Evans is furiously trying to work it out. We've had a lot of problems with the tech, but I, on, I think Chris we should Evans. be OK. I think we should be OK because I think we're, that's why we have Zencaster. Um, look, you are in my you're in a lot of TV shows and films. You're in my favorite ever TV show. And it's going to be difficult for you to know what that is because you've been in so many TV shows. But can you take a punt at guessing what what, what I think the greatest TV show of all time is that you are in? Wow, the greatest TV you've, show. You don't know much about me. That you <laughs> so think could be anything. Yeah, I was a little bit nervous because of who you were, and then who you know who you represent to your country, and then yeah. that your podcast takes place at the. Lester Theater, I was like, uh, I better get my shit together. And then when I saw you playing snooker with yourself and talking about touching your own butthole, I thought, yeah. um, I will be okay. <laughs> I'm not worried about impressing him. Now, Good. what kind of TV would this... What and do you, you think? You mentioned me in your snooker. You mentioned uh, safety not guaranteed. So I'm going to... You know, I'm not going to go with the obvious 24. I'm going to say that you, you, oh, Larry, the Larry Sanders show is going to. It be is the great. Larry Sanders show, greatest TV show of all time. Pretty, pretty I'm, fantastic. Yeah, and what was that? It's because you came in into what the third season of that second or third season? Yes, I was um, a replacement for Janine Garofalo. All oh, right, of course. Who you gave were, me yeah. her blessing? You know, as being cast because she was ready to leave, and that experience was pretty fantastic and I was very lucky to only be in a couple a scene or two per episode so that I could handle it because I was very green and I you know very uh underdeveloped socially was that <laughs> that's just such a dramatic way to say that I was a little bit awkward and a bit green sure. and a bit nervous and so that was the most amazing way to be thrown into something that was operating at such a high caliber and be able to yeah. kind of, you know, sink or swim, uh, which I, you know, was okay. Well, Made. it's always difficult. You know, I think that coming in, I mean, luckily, I think with Larry Sanders, all, all the main cast pretty much stayed with it. Certainly the, the principal top characters all stayed all the way through. We've just been rewatching The American Office and by the sort of sixth or seventh season, it's sort of, you know, hemorrhaging characters. And you obviously lose the main character. And then you sort of feel sorry for the actors coming in, having to try and, you know, try and make something of, you know, go, who are you in my favourite sitcom? Who are you? But I actually think it really it really worked with you coming in. I, I bought... I, I watched. I bought. I bought the uh, DVD box set of that you know, maybe seven or eight years ago. So a while since I've seen it, but we what we watched the whole thing all the way through because it was one of those programs in the UK they put out really late at night, and you know, and sometimes some weeks it wasn't on. So to actually sit down and watch the whole thing in order, but it was just such a genius show. Yeah, and I think and I think you know all the the all the characters are fantastic in it, but. It, we, I mean, you'd worked on uh, Mr. Show with uh, David Cross and uh, Bob Odenkirk before that. Yes. So I presume that's what, that, what, how they, you got, they got, you got their attention. Is that true, or did? Yeah. They... Yes, ish. I, I was coming straight from being a performance artist in art school, and Janine was hosting a stand-up show. Uh, you know, where you could go on TV and do stand-up. So I had a small set on that, but I was just do, being very. I like I was a performance artist, like the character of a performance artist, but it was really because I, I didn't have the ability to collect my thoughts and speak in sentences. I'm getting better at that now. Yeah, you're but very good. Then now. it was like I was doing this performance piece as stand up, and that was the tape that um, was given to Gary Shandling. Well, my the snooker's been. I'm working the other way. I'm trying to go back towards performance art. The snooker's been in a festival of transgressive art. Uh, well, I played, I me number that. fifteen is quite a. <laughs> me fifteen was uh, yeah. That was very good. Viking, you know, I'm good with the accents and stuff. That's why I feel You're great so, with accents. Feel, the feel way so you home, transform into the different use. It's it is amazing. It's amazing. I can send you all of it, and you can and you can start from the beginning. Yeah, your uh, skill eventually. is just mind blowing, you know. <laughs> and I'm so good at snooker as well. That's the main thing. <laughs> yeah, my my snooker board is so good. 
Um, You're keeping it on the board, you know, <laughs> most of the time. I am. So look, that's one of the things we're t- it, doing comedy in lockdown. I never used to video. I, this used to be just an audio only, audio only format in the old days. But since uh, she's left, she's back. Um, since we uh, have had lockdown, I've started doing sort of a lot of these things with yeah. cameras and, and video. And uh, we're watching your special. You've done a pandemic special, uh, which is you in your garage um, uh, doing stand-up direct to camera, yes. which is, it feels, it, it's a very lockdown. Of having been <laughs> someone who spent, you know, 50 or 60 shows just talking to the camera and not knowing how the audience are reacting. It's a very lockdown show. And it's one take, right? You did it. It's just one <laughs> static camera. So you talk for an hour. Well, at- yeah, my producing partner and I were doing it. And when you start to, you start to think too much, you know, like, cause if we had added in another camera, we, we played around with having like a side shot. But once you do that, then it's as if you're saying, oh, we're, I'm filming this, you know, and then you, then it's going to be looked at as if we're trying to do something that's polished. And it's like, well, the, these are the limitations of where we are. And so we're going to use that to the best of our abilities. And it was coming off the heels of doing a live Zoom show a couple days before And, you know, she was the one that kind of nudged me to do it. She said, you know, because I was slated to film uh, before the pandemic, a comedy album. And then lockdown happened. And she said, why don't we just, you do the set you just did on this Zoom show and we'll film it. And and that's what we did. And oh, and then when I, our friend scored it and he's brilliant at, he's a comedian himself and he he knew what he was doing. He said he was going to drink a beer and then score it. And I had complete trust in him. Um, but, you know, I watched a bit of it without the score and I thought, I'm proud of myself. And then once the score was there, it really emphasizes my my oddness and my way of storytelling. I was like, yeah. oh, no, like what? <laughs> Ooh, what is she I don't doing? know. It's it's a bold decision. I've never seen that. It's like a jazz thing almost because it's like you talking over music for for you know. I thought oh maybe the music is gonna fade out or maybe it's just to begin with, but it's all the way through and it's That's you right. know it's not. It's like sometimes it's a little bit distracting, but it's but also that's quite interesting because it sort of pulls you somewhere else and pulls you around. But yeah, I mean the whole thing looks. I mean your stand up persona, and I'm guessing possibly even your persona. It's it's slightly it's it's slightly out there, and Ooh. so it's it's having a woman in a garage talking to you for an hour about how her dating is going badly in lockdown. It's you know when it's when there's an audience there laughing, it's a different thing than when it's just a someone. I'm you know, sorry, what a, are you trying to say? I'm then? trying to say, well, this is what people say to me when I'm playing with ventriloquist dummies and talking for an hour and an hour and a half. It, you know, there's a danger that th- this is a, someone having an actual lockdown breakdown. Sure, sure. Um, and yes. you're sort of observing it, which is, I think, then it's like a sort of a Alan Bennett monologue. You know, it's like an, like an incredible, it's it's a very good show. It's a very funny show. But I think it's, we were mentioning just before how it reminded Maria Bamford, who pre-lock, before lockdown was performing to one person. And then I, I interviewed her and said, you know, that is so, must be so difficult. In a way, no people's easier than one person, I think, right? Because one person, you're looking at their reaction and they, they've got to go, <laughs> they're, they're very self-conscious. Whereas no people, you got your cat was in, I think, was it your cat and your dog in the yeah. in the room? I had the um, dog licking uh, water out of the toilet. That was, it, you know, it's up to my interpretation. Was it supportive or was it a heckle? <laughs> That's well, I get uh, my 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 cat sometimes. My cat's got a very weird meow and sometimes comes in and heckles at the back of here. So I understand that. But uh, yeah, no, it's it's great, and you can people can da- download it for can rent it for like two dollars or something like two pounds. I think I didn't. I I could have had it for free, but I paid for it. Mary, wow, wow, thank um, you very much. I thought I, I, I can I can shell out two two dollars or two pounds. Uh, so it's very it's you know it's a good it's a good value. You can buy it for a bit more, or you can you can rent it and watch it. Uh, but uh, no, it's it's. Do you feel? Do you feel it? Do you feel like locked? You know, within the the, the stand up, it's about those sort of difficulties of lockdown. Part, uh, partly, there's lots of things I want to talk to you about it about the about the special because there's loads of great stuff in it. But you do talk about that sort of going on dates 
uh, having recently sort of become single again and yeah. uh, and that being sort of accentuated. Although the date stories, you just kind of happened across a couple of not great, not terrible guys, I don't think, but not, not great guys, maybe. You know, I got a couple of good stories out of it for my stand-up. Uh, but I think what I've learned, if I genuinely want to date, you ha- you need to text and then you need to Zoom, and then you need to meet in person. Although I do have a friend who said, good for you, for going for it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I there's mean, a guy who tries to pick you up at a laundromat who's just driving around a laundromat. Tries to. Oh, he does and, pick me up. And, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. That's, that's why lockdown breakdown. You go on a date with a guy who's just driving around going, hey, hey let's see let your face. Let me tell you, okay? I had no makeup. It was 100 degrees. The hair, I was... I was with my dog. I was at the laundromat. You know what sold it is this right here. You see that? Yeah, I can that. I can see why I can see why he was excited now. Yeah. I think I've seen that. Well, I had um, my um my my I almost said stirrups. I had my leggings with the palm trees on them, so it really accentuated my luscious booty. Um, that's all I can think. I mean, unless yeah. it's just this, this is just, he said I was friendly in all honesty. He said I was, that I said hello back to him. So he yeah. decided to circle back and use the opening line of, uh, you still here doing laundry? <laughs> <laughs> well, if it what the thing is, I think with guys like that, it's just, if you try it enough times. <laughs> and then he so, followed it up so. with, uh. I just got my uh, registration for my car at the grocery store. There's a machine. You can get the registration tick sticker, put it on your car, and it worked. I thought, well, this guy's got his shit together. I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> he looks clean. He looks handsome. He's got a nice big car. I'm in. Okay. I think it's good to... You know- I think it's different for women. It's good to take chances <laughs> with safety in mind. Um I think it's you know, but it's it's also the, the it's not just COVID, is it? I mean, it's sort of not even COVID, really. It's you you've been in you haven't been dating for 10, 15, 20 years or something Correct. like that, and and then you're back into dating, it's and it's not great. It's not a great it's situation. A, it's a difficult thing to get, but I think like the positive thing about COVID, uh, and I'm not single, and I'm very upset about that. I'm not single now because that I've got a lovely wife and two kids because post covid <laughs> so post covid it's going to go crazy out there there's going to be um, a lot of you're you going to have so? the time yeah it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a fuck fest is all it's going to be like the purge of sex out there I mean Everything I'd like goes. to believe you because we need some good news but I don't think I think it's going to be so gradual and people are still going to be scared. Who am I? I think you're right. I think I've just been traveling in the wrong circles. I've been around people who are very conscientious and concerned and not leaving their houses. I got a hit with the the party people who yeah. are out licking toilets and opening <laughs> ice cream. And they were, but their- also, I, you know, I can't, I, I can't imagine, you know, I can't imagine being like 24 and having to go through, when I was 24, when I was having very little sex anyway, but the, and was mainly locked in my house <laughs> because I was too scared to ring anyone to say let's go out. But you know, if there was, if it was literally nothing, if it was a year of just being in your in your house, wanking yourself stupid, then it would be it would be a very difficult thing to cope with. So well done to the young single people for getting through it. Well I think done, it's going to. I don't think these young people. I don't mean to across the board say that they are like this. They're all going out anyway. Yeah. They, well, they definitely are. And of course they are. And people aren't going to stop dating. So you know it's... what they're probably doing is like covering their <laughs> air and just like humping. Yeah. I mean, it's ideal in many ways. You've got to probably come, come in from behind. No kissing. Thank you. There's beautiful. always the behind option. Again, yeah, it takes beautiful. both of us. It takes the female and the male mind to really make the connections happen. I should open my door so my son can hear this part. <laughs> I think this would be really useful. He knows really it. He's 12. He knows, he, knows, he knows all of this already. He, but no, he it's a, it's a, I would recommend this. I haven't seen your other stand-up special, though I love the name of the other stand-up special, which is Mary Lynn Spreads Her Legs. But this is about becoming yes. a, a mother right is that what the, yes yeah. that was that was never put on the old uh celluloid b- b- video oh, was tape. Not- that was never taped that was a live show okay well that's i've got an excuse for not seeing it then 
because I couldn't have come. Thank across. you. Well, thank you for even watching this and for having me on. <laughs> Sincerely, no. I appreciate it. It is my absolute pleasure. Um, and well, uh, the the other thing I've, uh, that comes across from the special, I guess, is um, it's sort of weird because you are you're so successful as an actor, especially <laughs> you really are. You're so successful, <laughs> like you've worked constantly. Yeah, your you tone. Were... A couple of minutes ago, it was like, what did you say? <laughs> it this special is good it's almost there's a qualifier and this what i'm reading it into it is you going why why are you acting this way you're successful <laughs> you're a grown woman you're a beautiful well, look, angel same. people I'm, like you what I'm, is why are you so disturbed in the same, and in unsure the same all of the time i just think seeing a woman talking to a camera in a garage <laughs> about all the things you talk about it adds an extra dramatic element to it. I love it. It's absolutely completely up my street. And what are you what, saying? A little bit too under. much? I'm letting it I'm letting it hang out there. I'm just saying it's difficult as a comedian to perform to no audience, right? And and actually the dip when when I've seen you on the podcast telling the same stories you tell in the uh in the special, yeah. it's like a totally different thing because there's people there reacting and it's sort of it's so it's, it's true. It's funny in a different way. But it's really you know, when you're watching someone talk at a camera for 48 minutes, and I'm doing it all the time, so I, I'm, it's, I'm very much from a place, very much from. But the other thing in the now you know is how you, I felt when I was watching you play snooker with. No, exactly. Uh, well, I can't talk. Viking I'll get, you. I'll and, get the I'll get the dolls and in a sec. gay me yeah. and me number fifteen. Yeah, all yeah, of you've, them. You've only seen a few. There's there's forty of them at the moment. Um, <laughs> but it's about the nature of fame you talk about and the fact that you've been you know in films and tv since the mid 90s and yes. you've been constantly working and yet people think they just know you from you know school or something from oh, the school that's right? my favorite that's my favorite when I finally own myself a little bit and they say where do I know you from and I have that moment where I said you know what today I'm gonna go for it Today, I'm going to be like Tom Jones going, yes, you threw your underwear at me on stage. You know, I'm going to have that attitude. They say, where do I know you from? And I say, from television and movies. <laughs> no, that's not it. <laughs> yes, it is. Trust me, but it is. No. It's a well, it's, you know, there's some been, as you say, 24 is a is a, a massive, massive show. And there's, there's you've been in most of the, the, the you know, the, the sitcoms over the last 10 15 years or certainly a good good selection of them um and you know so it's it's sort of it's sort of crazy that somebody somebody can be that uh, you know present and around and that people it's a weird thing that the way that fame works that some people if you see i don't know george clooney there's no doubt it's george clooney but then right. there's this massive amount of people and you sometimes think oh it'll be a guy who was in one advert in 1997 i'm a bit confused about him but somebody's been in 24 <laughs> And uh, and everything you've been <laughs> in and movies is it, you know it's sort of crazy that um that and, and you know, you have the woman saying you know why oh what are you doing now you're not acting anymore you know <laughs> you're not, you're not, <laughs> so Do you people miss acting <laughs> that you miss acting. <laughs> but, like I didn't know um, I stopped. Um... <laughs> It's also fun to be performing at a B comedy club, let's say in Tampa, Florida, and have half the room be a flyered audience and just like who does she think she is you know and then the all the people up front are just like oh chloe like uh like in in, in reverence to me yeah. and then people in the back going why does she act like we give a crap and the people in the front are just like please talk about 24 please talk about 24 so you know to balance those two out I have to have a talking to sometimes you know like <laughs> I'm sorry you don't care but this audience member cares and I, think, I just think it's it's so interesting but it's I think that's fun uh you did like a lot of stand-up you did some stand-up in the UK I understand I was reading in one interview oh, was that, was that yeah so how was that I mean again people would know you in the UK from all okay the that let's talk about it that was uh, half of it was absolutely terrible and then the other half of it was wonderful. Now, the first, I'm wondering if I tried to go through my agent to get a couple of spots, but I know that the first couple spots I get were be, were because of like my celebrity. And so, and I can't remember the venue. It's been too long, but it was a large theater-ish. 
Mm. Is it a Soho theatre? No, because no. that is sort of, this place was echoey and large and okay. uh, the stage was off the ground and it was, oh God, it'll come to me after we get off of here, the other people that were on there. As soon as I took the stage, it was late, they were drunk, just just my body language, you know what I mean? And then the the first syllable out of my mouth was just like, fuck you like they just the sound of my voice like speaking of being a woman in her garage speaking like you have to be you have to be wanting to see that like I did not come out with any posturing I did not have the references I did not have the same accent I was not also drunk and they I mean I don't know if I was being booed off the stage. I did stay for as long as I could, but there was no, there was no rhythm. There was no connection. There was no ability for anybody to. And then then I did another one that was like an open mic. I I feel like this was in your, I'm making this up. Is there a comedy store in like Piccadilly or something? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's moved there, I think now, yeah. uh, So they do a thing where they, it's like a gong, they gong you off and you have two minutes. Now, meanwhile, I'm, have been going on the road. I'm there doing an acting job. You know, I'm trying to work my stuff. I'm going to like to go and do a set at night. I'd like to go and at least do a 10, 12 minute set. Here I am going, you know, basically it's like, see if you can stay on stage for two minutes. And it's like, this is not my idea of, you know, work, working some jokes out. And I'm staying until like two, three in the morning because you have to put your thing, your, you know, your name on a piece of paper. And I finally get up there and it takes the first 40 seconds for people to realize who I am. And then they just start yelling, where's Jack Bauer? And like throwing stuff. And I was like, okay, this has been an exercise in I don't know what for me, just like pure self-torture. Uh, so that was that. But then I did something really smart on my part, which seemed ridiculous at first. I started cold, just like Googling smaller rooms yeah. and reaching out. And, and you know, you get people's website and everyone wants to, spe- I feel like especially in the UK, everyone wants to look like their show is amazing and official and like hard to get on. But once I kind of broke through the wall and just was like, I don't know if anyone will email back. Most of the time people did and they were super happy, really nice, really genuine. And then it was the best ever when I started meeting all the comics that were actually out in rooms, you know, comparable to how LA would be. Once you find all the rooms where people are hanging out and doing comedy and even watching each other, you know, it was like yeah. where, and I met really great people and yeah, I would just go out on, you know, on the tube at night and not getting off in dark places and walking to weird pubs and going down into the leaky basement. And yeah, that, that was where some of the funnest sets ever. Yeah, well, there's some great clubs in London. The Gong Show is like absolutely like the wrong place. To do. That was wrong. That was yeah. Wrong. Well, it's very much feels like my wife did it. Who's a stand up as well, and she did it and won it. One the the time she the time did? she did it. Yeah, but uh, but that was sort of incredible. It was sort of incredible because she's she's quite a sort of shy kind of introverted performer Fantastic. as well. So it, so it wasn't really her, her exact audience, but she really kind of got it. But yeah, that was right near the beginning when she started. That's so great. it's not it's not somewhere to go when you, you know, know what you're doing. And it is, well, it's that when you're doing something esoteric, which your stuff is, you know, you're, a lot of the stuff you're playing when there is an audience there, you're playing with the audience like almost, you know, you're, you're taking it slow and you're, 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 you're playing around with that nervousness of, oh my, you know, what, what what's happening here? And it, right. is, it, does she know what she's doing or does she not know what she's doing? Right. I'm and not it, very know, like hit you over the head presentational. No. Get, get used to my hard hitting opinions. <laughs> no, but it's good because it's, so again, it's sort of like a, it's like a performance piece as much as anything, but it's, it's you as well as you, you're out there. And I think that's got, certainly in the UK, that's got more easier to do in the last 10 or so years. You know, I think when I started in the nineties, it, I I didn't really I I was I wasn't confident enough to kind of grab an audience and wanted to be more esoteric and it wasn't it was really stamped down. Whereas so I now what did think, you do? That, did you did you work within that? I sort of did and did it. Some some I just I I didn't do very well to begin with because I was you know I I either do really well or really badly and nothing in between. 
And and I, then I sort of started trying to second guess what I thought the audiences or the promoter would like rather than doing what I thought was good. And then I just got into a spiral of, oh, my God, I don't know what to do anymore. And I started working in a double act and that sort of started taking off and we went in different avenues. And I, did, I didn't really like doing stand-up in, to begin with. And then I came back to it in about 2004 and then that's when it – it really sort of made sense or two, yeah, in the 2000s, it sort of really made sense to me. And and then I also just started doing exactly was it, what was I it wanted. Was it that you were different or the scene was different or both? Both, I think. I think weirdly, because the stuff I'd done in the 90s had slightly influenced me and I worked with Stuart Lee. And I think our stuff had slightly influenced the comedy circuit itself. So we fitted in a bit better. But also I just completely went, fuck it, I'm going to do. I did a year where I just did whatever I wanted to do. How I did a, I did a, a 40 minute set about buying yogurt. Uh, and, uh, you know, and it was just about how long I could keep that idea going. And, when you do the 40-minute uh, you know, set about your one ball, you could put that could be a companion piece to the yogurt. It can be. If I'd put more yogurt on my balls, then maybe they'd be... I wasn't going to say it. I didn't want to yeah, be maybe like, I told you so, but <laughs> everyone knows a little plain yogurt on the balls. <laughs> but in the UK, we've always done that thing of working towards a, a an hour-long show, 50-minute hour-long show that then tours it. 90 minutes to two hours, you know, so it's, I've always done uh, shows about something really. So yeah, the good thing about anything bad happening to you is that there is comedy in it. As long as you live through it, that's all you have to do. You just have you to live through it. You are living. <laughs> You're I'm living alive. through so it. So while I'm alive, I will do, You're gonna I mean, do it's great. The same, But it's the same thing as you, you're working, you know, I think this stand-up show, it's really fascinating. It's a really fascinating and interesting stand-up show and it's very funny. <laughs> And but I think you're working. I think I think you'll look back at it in quite an interesting way because I think you're working your way through something personally, yeah, yeah. Uh, and doing it in but doing it in public. But that's what comedians do, right? Is with the, if you're you're oh, you've been very I honest. About it. That's where your tone is coming from because you're going, oh my god, do you know you're working through this personally? But personally, publicly. I think you are. I think when you look yeah. back, and I look back at the shows from you know when I was single uh, before I met my wife, and you know you can sort of see. I'm aware of it as well in the shows, but you can sort of, yeah, with the hindsight, you can look at it. But, you know, you're working through a, a difficult period in your life and using comedy to kind of process it, which is what I think most comedians do. Certainly what I'm going to be doing with my one testicle from now on. <laughs> so when you look back at this time and then when I look back, what are yeah. what are we going to be like in the future? I don't know. That's what's exciting, isn't it? That's what's that's what's exciting about I'm the future. I'm single. You you have a single ball. You will sit, have a single ball. Where will we be? You could be married to my. If I get, if I can retrieve the ball, I can send it to you, and you can marry my ball. I mean, I'll check with my well, wife. I mean, I would allowed. love to meet your ball. I'm not saying I'll marry it. I would love. To, I would love to be acquainted. I I have some yogurt for your ball okay, for good. sure. I think you could be what it. You might be what it needs to get through. You never know. Um, why are you thanked on the liner notes of Fiona Apple's album uh, When the Porn dot dot dot? I don't know what the whole title's called. I secretly I got this... wrote all of those songs. Did you? That's good. She doesn't want anyone to know. <laughs> I was also her vocal coach. Um, okay. I was, I knew her from our local club that was a comedy and music club that we all used to hang out with. And her producer, on, I forgot, I don't think he did the whole album, but that she worked with that I was dating. So we were all friends. Okay, that's nice. No, I thought you might. I thought you might have written some material for her. Just this, just a th thanks. Thanks, okay. It's on the IMDB. That's one of the facts about you on IMDB. I don't know if you oh, boy. check that out. That yeah, so you find it, get some interesting stuff off of there. Um, I, was, and, I, was, uh, I had a very charmed life in the 90s. Well, yeah, I mean, it sounds, but you were saying you, again, you were saying you were socially, it sounds like you were socially awkward and finding life kind of weird and difficult in a way. Oh, and then you kind of. Completely. But, but looking you, back on it, I just did a yeah. show yesterday where they pick pieces of your stuff over the years. And, and now that I've had time and I'm so mature now, uh, it's, it was, it was a very sweet time. Yeah. And yeah, I was definitely tortured. I mean, I used to. But I also was having a great time. You know, it was simultaneously both. I used to get so tired. I wouldn't get nauseous before sets, but I would just get, I would do that thing where your body just collapses and I would fall asleep before doing a set and I would have absolutely no idea what I was going to say. And, you know, 
If you th- if started- you think I'm using the the personal stuff now, I mean it was a com- <laughs> it was a complete like almost neurotic meltdown every time, which is I think why cuz I didn't have jokes, so, so I think that's why people were watching me to see if I yeah. was going to melt down. Now I do it in a crafted way, you know. Yeah. In yeah. total control at all times, Richard <laughs> Herring. I'm ju- you. You're absolutely fantastic. I'm, your, I'm a very big fan. So if if anything else is coming across, it should not be. Uh, I'm a cheeky little so and so though. So I apologise if I'm coming across as being rude. No, I, I, I no. I believe now when you're talking about starting, I'm equating it to the way the whole scene is in the UK because I got yeah. a little taste of that, and it yeah. does. I mean, we have that here less now than in the past but it's that presentational like you better be on top of your stuff i don't want to see any of the cracks i don't want to see you know i want you to present to me like yeah don't waste my time i don't want to see somebody who's like potentially falling apart and that's always the area that i was interested in so yeah <laughs> but i think and that's, i think that's that. coming from your context of 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 you know that world yeah, I think that's the area I'm interested. In. I just, I think it's, I think it's, I and mean, also as you are, you know, as you're an actor as well, and and try, I've I've found a lot of actors who are sort of playing the Hollywood game become nervous about re- revealing too much about themselves or saying the wrong thing, and it feels like you don't, you know, it feels like the, the way it feels, which may not be the way it is, is that you just go about whatever you want to do and whatever comes to you and that you want to do, you end up doing, but it, it doesn't seem like you're worried about um, playing that game in that way. And yet you're still sort of getting all these roles. I think in the past 10 to 12 years, I was able to delve into my stand up in a way that I wasn't when I was doing a lot more acting. So sure. it's been in these past few years it, with a lot of late night sets and definitely just doing what I want to do, you know, because yeah. I, because I'm, I, it doesn't really matter. I mean, the only thing that I would be worried about is the people that I care about feeling like I, but I, I don't really, I mean, I think I'm generally sweet. There's always a, a nugget of truth that you heighten, yeah. you know, that could, um, but, well, the uh, guy, the guy in the in the special who who brings a subway sandwich to the picnic him. and nothing that's else. On him. So, one sandwich <laughs> he doesn't come happy. he'll know who he is though right so he'll be you know that's you can't you can't care too much it's good to be told it's good to, that he's told that what he's done yeah <laughs> it's unacceptable I, I, it's I, I feel bad because i did not tell him in person i just did only that that's my coward way i just immediately put it into the comedy and don't address it personally yeah, but that's the comedian's way. That's why you know I don't talk to anyone about anything. But then, <laughs> then, then I let them know. Then I let them know in, during my snooker matches yeah. what I think. About right. them. I'm going to ask you some emergency questions because I have a, I haven't asked you any, and people miss them if I don't do them. Um, so I'm going to take some at random. I'll, I'll, let's ask you a, a, an easy one first of all. Have you ever seen a ghost, Mary Lynn? Have you ever witnessed a ghost? Um. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say you would have done. And what ta- what form did the ghost? <laughs> what form did the ghost take? I was performing at an old theater in Santa Monica, and I saw a woman in the audience whose eyes were glowing, and her hair was like this, and it was distracting me because I kept going like, "What's wrong with that woman?" And then I looked back, and she wasn't there. It wow, was a real woman. So, so even ghosts don't like your stuff. That even ghosts. <laughs> That's it. That's insulting. I'm dead. I've got nothing to do. I'm not staying. I'm not hanging around for yeah, this. No. I'm not hanging around. For... That's no. That's that's uh, well. That that's yeah. Pretty good. I'm seeing what them all the you? time. But for real? I, well, I've got. I live in a really old house, and there's a crying baby. There's a crying baby. Used to we used to hear that wasn't no, my baby. Not the um, crying baby. The crying baby. We used to. Me and my wife both used to hear it. Um, and I, you know, I get spooked. It gets spooked out in this house a little bit, but it's because it's, you know, it's Not dark corners, creaking, baby. creaking, chimps, wind coming down the chimneys. It's an old, old house. What so happened you, you to never the baby? Know. I don't want to know. Well, you know, I presume it's a, you know, the, 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 it's the least scary ghost, right? A baby ghost because it can't do anything. <laughs> It's, it's the most crawl sad ghost, yeah. though. It's sad, but it's the not scary. The least scary, the most sad. 
this house used to be a, a, a doctor's and uh, there was a hospital rooms built out there. So it will have come in a young baby and uh, you know, they can't all make it. Not in the 18th century. Okay. I'm sorry I, to break it to you. Well, I guess I'll start crying, At least your though. ghost was a woman who lived a life. Yeah, she was groovy. She was just going to the theater, you know, <laughs> dipping in and out like she was at the Edinburgh Festival. Um, and you're, well, look, you're in, a, I'm very obsessed with time travel films, and I believe you are, you filmed a time travel film, The Did Tomorrow I, War. Oh, oh, yeah, that hasn't come out yet. Yeah, I, 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 I read about it on uh, Wikipedia. It's you, uh, time you. travel. The the premise of this movie is quite an interesting premise. Chris Pratt's in it, I think. One of the Chris's is it Chris Pratt? That's one right. The, That's exactly Chris's. right. Um, he uh, the the Earth is under alien attack. Yes, and they use time travel to bring soldiers from the past to fight the aliens. That is correct. Soldiers wow. from the future, right, to try to beat the aliens before they kill the human race, and they start oh, recruiting. Okay. Like regular people, and I would be under the category of regular people. So you're one of the the the, the people fighting the aliens. Yeah, in it the was really cool. Yeah. It was really fun. Well, I love sci-fi stuff, and I love time travel stuff. I'm very, very. It's good you haven't seen it because I'm very. I'm. I, I need it to absolutely hundred percent work logically. So well, I'll be very curious. No, I am not. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to the uh, guy, like the gun handler guy, the gun expert, and I was the one day of shooting. I was like, "What the fuck is going on here?" And he he said, "This is what it feels like on those big movies, like big Marvel movies and stuff." He goes, "Action movies of this caliber always, you never know what's going on. Like once it comes down to them shooting, I was assuming he was saying there were so many moving parts." And so many things change along the way. And it's being done on such a massive scale and so many different departments that it almost always feels insane. And like we would just keep getting it days added, you know, and like go back home and come back. And he said that that's what those movies are like. And everyone's just like, let's see how it comes together. I mean, right. I, I, honestly, I, I did a little sound looping and it looked it, it looked incredible. I I only saw, you know. 40 seconds of it but it, it right it i think it's gonna be really fun but i'll be very curious to see if it passes the uh yeah i'll let you know test with you i, I will t i'll tweet you I'll, I'll send you a tweet and let you know whether it's okay or not because even back to the future which i like it doesn't hold it doesn't hold up the i time, heard you time, talking about that, the time that, travel that almanac hold up. which i don't even remember well that's it's very important it's a bunch of bullshit <laughs> it's, it's it's insulting me and my six-year-old daughter to not understand how time travel works. Uh, but I love it. It's very exciting. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I'll ask you another emergency question. Hold on. While I'm, while I'm thinking. That's, this is what they're for. Oh, I'm going to take my glasses off. I can't, I can't read them. Um, have you ever seen a, a Bigfoot? You're in America. I should ask all my American guests whether they've seen a Bigfoot. Have you ever seen a Bigfoot? No. Uh, but I did just the other day walk into a... I don't know what they're called, a den, a pack of coyotes. Wow. Yeah. And you came out unscathed? It you walk was... into... Uh, I'd like to tell you about it if you're interested. I am very interested. So I did a COVID move. You know, I have the failed marriage. Work was slowing down. I sold my house. I moved out, out of state, which really is just way outside of Los Angeles, near some nature, some desert nature. Mm -hmm lifted myself up. This is great. I made the right decision. I take this beautiful little hike, super naturey, but still really close. It's not, you know, remote, but you, you, you make a little turn off of the main path. It's about a mile. I have gone with my neighbor who we've seen one coyote before, and I've seen two on the mountain really far away. And he, my neighbor brings, a. Uh, a whistle, mace, he's got an air gun, which he's never really used, and a flashlight. I'm going out there, sands, any of that, and I'm by myself. I'm not with my neighbor. My dog, I got him off leash. He's a golden retriever mix because I. he's got to feel himself. You know, he, he chases a rabbit, comes back. He's responsive. I know he's going to come back. Goes out, doesn't come back. I look up, I see one coyote. 
I'm screaming for my dog, Leo, 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 come back. Doesn't come back. I, as soon as I see that coyote, I just take off and start screaming and running towards it because now they're, they're just going to lure him in and he's going to keep going. I can't see him. I'm like, Leo! I run in there. I get to a ravine. I stop to catch my breath. Nothing. Dead silent. No dog. No. Co- I'm like, this is not good. There's like a standoff going. Finally, I, he pops back up, my dog. I see the one coyote. He jumps out, but like in a movie, I can see him, but I haven't leashed him yet. Leo, come here. I turn to my left. Four coyote heads staring. Blind. I mean, this is bigger than Bigfoot, right? I, I get the dog. I do get him on leash. And I'm just, I am lost my mind. I'm just like, get out of here. Like, I don't, I have no mace. Not, I'm just like yelling and flailing, turn around. And I've run so fast so far that I'm like, fuck, I got to find the path. Go back towards, I, I'm like, all right, you got your dog. You just go towards the path. Get to the path. There's another one not popping out of the brush, but like standing on the road. And again, I just get out of here, like yell. And they sort of, they get scared, but then they come back, you know, like they're not that scared. And then I walk out. This is the creepiest part. This is like a baby, like a baby ghost crying in the night. I walk out. They start talking to each other. They're like, oh, yip, no. yip, yip, yip. like they're like, shit's going down. They're talking about me and my dog. You know, I'm like, yeah. I, I FaceTimed my mom. <laughs> this is what I did. I said, Mom, can you hear that? We just, we made, I beat off a den of coyotes. So that's my. Uh, wow. You, you got away and you, you survived. And then my you're... dog afterwards, like he's agitated. But by the time we get to the end, it's like he forgot about it. Like, can you just be there with me? Can you share my reality and understand what we've been through together? He doesn't even acknowledge. Can you believe? I can't, another, I can't believe uh, your dog. I just can't. I'm, I'm just, yeah, I can't believe the way the dog has behaved in that story. Just another disappointing relationship, my dog. <laughs> Acting like it didn't happen. All right, I'll ask you another a date. This is a date-based question. Don't Would believe. you rather date a man who was a six-foot-tall penis or a man who, instead of having a penis, had a tiny man down... <laughs> There instead, so it's, wow. a diff- it's a different. It's a different. That's a great person. question. Does Thank the you. tiny man have a penis? Um, it probably, well, I imagine he might have another man. I think if I think the tiny man, the giant penis, I think doesn't is just a penis. I don't think that has a penis. Right. The giant penis. I think the tiny penis man probably has another tiny man where his penis should be, and so on to infinity. And then, if right. you look backwards, the man you are w- with would probably be a, a, on sure. another giant man. Wow, that's that's tripped <laughs> out. Uh, yeah. You know, it seems like the Any large pref- the, the large penis would be more basic and kind of exciting just to wonder at it. But yeah. I, uh, in my mind, is having fun jumping from one to the other back and forth. So thank yeah, you for that. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm it's go, a, di- a difficult choice. It is it's a difficult, difficult choice. That's why uh, and a great I don't question. ask easy questions. No, uh, <laughs> the, the, the 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 man in the place of the Good penis. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the. Be- I think a lot of people feel the gi- the six foot penis man would be Too intimidating. Well, embarrassing to be around, you know. I think it uh, would, you know, you'd have to go on dates with it, and people going, "Is that is that a giant penis?" Even if he dressed up a bit, like a put it like a. Maybe I'm on. the perfect girlfriend for him because I just said <laughs> that's intimidating. Like I wouldn't be embarrassed. I'd just be like, "Aren't you scared? Look at my date. It's a giant yeah. penis. Are you intimidated?" I think you might be. I think you might be the woman to take that on. I think you might. <laughs> maybe I have um, already. You know, <laughs> maybe, maybe I have. have. So, oh, and you did the Edinburgh Fringe in 2016, which was about the only year I didn't do the Edinburgh Fringe, oh. so I didn't get to see your show. How did how did you enjoy the Edinburgh Fringe? You know, it was fantastic, just the atmosphere. But I kind of, I have to admit, I wish that I had just gone there to do sets and hang out right. because to have to execute a show. And again, I got a really good theater because of my name, but I also got judged with people like, oh, really? So it was hard, you know? It's like, yeah, I'm here to, I don't want to have to 
be judged. And I guess that's what it's all about, but have to win you over because you know me from 24 and here I am talking about my personal life. Uh, so I think I would have loved it had I done, and I didn't really know how to do that coming in, coming in cold, you know, and also being a, a mature woman. Had I gone in my twenties, I think I would have been happy to just stay whenever, wherever and do the, do the collect the hat shows because those were the ones I enjoyed going to as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is, it is, you know, I've been going there for, since I was, uh, 19 i think was the first year I went well, there. I've done, wow you've had a I've done, different yeah yeah so and absolutely as a man in my 50s and i haven't gone up well it hasn't there hasn't wasn't one last year i was meant to go last year but yeah it's it's a different experience when you when you're a little older but uh, yeah it's it's it yeah it's interesting to come across out of you've done so many different kinds of films what do you consider to be there actually there aren't there aren't any real stinkers in there even the Adam Sandler oh. film you did was it one of the good Adam Sandler films. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> is there a lot any of good you, stuff? Is there any that you think that was that was? Uh, I'm I'm because uh, with films, I'm guessing you don't you get a script, but it changes, and you don't know how it's going to be, and you don't know who's going to be in it, and you don't know how it's going to go. And so often, you think this is an exciting project, but it turns out to be a bit of a uh, you know a bit of a turd in the, <laughs> the end of it but uh it was your pro are, are you choosing films carefully or are you just taking stuff that comes along because they seem to be there's a lot of very very good films and well i think all the stinkers never made it to the light of day it, never made it out at all I, I no disrespect to the amount of I, that that's not even true not that they were stink it's a lot of smaller films yeah that don't make it on there um that maybe just didn't come together completely. But uh, now I feel bad. Like I'm disparaging smaller projects. No, it I, no, I didn't no, mean that's... that at all. Uh, all I can say to that is uh, thank you. And yes, I've, <laughs> I've chosen well yeah, because chosen. I work with the, I only work with the best and I only do the best. How about that for an answer? Cause that is I'm, a very good answer. I'm a queen. And if you go on a date with me, bring me my own <laughs> sandwich, bring me my own sandwich. Do you, do you, do you seem to take like part I think like sometimes someone get, like has a big big hit in something, and then they will only take like the a lead role. Even you're saying in this sci-fi film, you've you've done something that's a few days filming rather than like a a major role in it. Are you you still seem happy to take a smallish part in something? Oh, I don't have the opportunity for lead roles. But you've been you've been you've played bigger roles in some things. So, but but some people would some actors I think get sort of. I think it's a much better way to act is to go, look, I'm going to take this role. This is an interesting role. These are, they're all good roles you're still doing. Yeah. But, and I think uh, that's exactly the logic. Yeah. It's like, and there, there's kind of a blessing in something that's more limited and doesn't take all of your time. You know, it's kind of cool to be able to try on different things that are interesting and, and smaller, but, but do a variety of things. Yeah. But I've, I do a little bit of acting. I don't. I'd like to do a bit more, really. But I, I find it, and my roles are usually pretty small in <laughs> the things I'm doing. But I, I, I sort of agree. I kind of like going in for a day or two because I sort of start to get a bit bored and cold. Yeah, it's, quite, it's, it's sort best. of not as it. It's not. And it's you don't not, have the pressure of trying to carry the whole thing, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's kind of not as interesting. I suppose all the stuff around it is exciting, but the job itself. Is often a lot of doing nothing, right, or 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 doing the same thing over and over again, at least. Yeah, I I don't really mind doing it over and over. I mean, it's a completely different beast than you know from live performing, where everything is so in the moment. Like you have these parameters when you're on a set, where it's you know you're just doing part of that scene for the next four hours. Yeah. And there's a kind of a cushion. There's a different kind of a a safety, which might drive some people nuts. It's just a different feeling because you know that you can usually you can have another take and try it another way. Yeah. You know, and then you can go have a snack. Someone, you, did... someone will brush your, you know, the lint off your shoulder. It's a very uh it's a very blessed way to be. So sure. so yeah, the hours in between are completely dead and terrible but you sort of live for these moments where you get to have that special time i was it was this what you sort of envisaged happening to you to become to become in this uh you know i mean comedian and actor 
you did, it didn't feel like you from looking at your life story that that you had that big plan you were sort of doing art and then you sort of drifted into doing comedy from the art yeah. uh was was it was it something you sort of anticipated you would you would get this three four decade long career as an no, actor no not at all not at all i no. just uh i i really liked performing and i i had the ability to or the courage or or whatever word d- dumb blind faith to to go towards something that excited me and that I wanted to do at the right time where I could get away with doing that and then the rest is you know pretty magical <laughs> it's great um uh, you're on cameo i've talked to uh ian michael black about this cuz yes. i was surprised I'm sur- I was surprised how little he charged for his cameo. You charge less than Ian Michael Black, and really? you are way, you're way better than you're way bigger and because mine He's- was less, and somebody told me I needed to charge more. You should charge. You should charge more. You, it's too cheap. I'm going to be making you do all really? sorts of stuff. Yeah, I'm going to. Okay. I'm going to okay. be employing you over the next few weeks. You mean uh, when you when I get your ball and we start our relationship, <laughs> yeah. you're going to have a say. In, in raising all well my do. prices across the board, I I welcome I think, this. I think you got to charge more, but at this rate, you know, I can I can employ you every week to, to do something stupid <laughs> until I until I tire, I tire of it. Is it is it worth your time, your valuable time to to record uh, these messages? You for know, people? in this crazy world, yeah. y- sure, because I think it's a really sweet thing to do. And in this crazy world, I I look at it as another medium at this point. Yes, right. of course I have the time. Good. And have you been have you been working during lockdown? Have you managed to get acting roles? Because in the UK, the acting business seems to have been allowed to carry on a little bit. Really? Yeah. No, I haven't done. And I did one independent movie, and as soon as I arrived, someone on set got COVID. So I sat in my room for a few days. So that was harrowing. And I've just been kind of pivoting and doing, you know, doing the special, doing writing and. Yeah, writing TV, writing other stuff. Sure. That's it, inwardly reflecting a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of reflecting. I've got more active work in lockdown than I, I think you I've have? had in the last ten. I've done about four acting jobs in the last three or four months, and no that's probably way. as much as I've done in the previous eight years. How? Tell so, me everything. Uh, <laughs> there were the two two little parts in f- films, but one's kind of a. Uh, Quite a nice little funny part in an improvised film in Wales. That was horrible. It was horrible though because it was so cold. <laughs> it was really, it was in the wi- middle of winter. It was raining and it was cold. Oh no! But uh, but it was a lot of fun. And then I played somewhat. I keep. I'm getting. It's annoying because I've gone straight from thinking, oh, I can be the sort of jokey, you know, not lead, but kind of guy who's maybe got a girlfriend and might, yeah. girls might be interested in. Yeah. And now I'm just playing people's dads and great uncles <laughs> and stuff. And there's been no interim period for me to get used to it. And so I'm going in and I'm playing like this. Uh, in, I'm, I'm in an independent film about a, a, a girl in an indie band and I'm playing her dad. You know, yes. and there's a part of me going, I should be your boyfriend. Oh, no, no, I'm a Uh-oh. disgusting old man. Uh-oh. So I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm. I usually, I generally get parts. I don't know why, where I'm playing people who uh, employ sex workers or have something horrific happen to their genitals. Funny enough, or you know, some or just work in some sort of perverted manner. I don't understand why do I keep getting those roles, Marilyn? You've you've you know, talked to me for an hour now. People know that you can bring the humanity to the to <laughs> that type of person that you can relate. That yeah. it's a part of your soul. Yeah. You I've just, never see, but it's I've never uh, employed a sex worker in my life, so I don't know it's why. It's really your anti-sex worker. I'm not anti it. I've just you yeah, know. I've, welcome to the modern world. You better be pro. <laughs> I'm very pro it, but uh, I've just I've never. I mean, why? Oh, I I would never employ a sex worker. Why don't you try? Have you tried? <laughs> I'll ask again. I'll have to check with my wife, and then if she says yeah. that's fine, I will give it a go. You know um, she will. She's cool like that. She gets it. She is cool. She won the gong show, so you know yeah. there you go. That's that's very good. Look, it's been. Um, I don't want to take up too much of your time. You've been wonderful. We didn't talk about half the amazing stuff you've done. Dude, where's my car? That's got to be the worst film you've been in. How about that, dude? There where's you my go. Car? People I love that movie. I haven't seen it actually. I haven't seen it. I must go and watch it's that. I kind silly. of enjoy, see. I enjoy watching you know those sort of films that 
I don't know why I haven't watched that one, so I can't talk about Dude Wears Macabre. I enjoy watching sort of a mainstream film that isn't necessarily comedically uh, as tight as I would usually want my comedy to be. And well, uh, so I'm surprised. Watch Dude as... Wears My Car. Get back. I'm going to because there are some like very funny runs in there, very funny chunks, and there's a lot of. Uh things logically you're going to have a lot of questions you're going to have a lot but, of questions but again you know how many films that's a film from what is that 15 years ago that film i yeah. don't even know how long ago it was and that's still a you know that's still a recognizable named film that people would talk about so even the film that i've managed to find out of your many great works and you know you're also in um the the uh, uh the little miss sunshine yeah just did pretty well yeah. And so I hope that whole notebook is just about me. You've just had that's a whole all journal. You. Yes. Safety Not Guaranteed is an a- excellent film. I don't remember, but I just remember enjoying it at the time. I don't remember anything about it um, apart from that, really it enjoying it. It has time travel. Yeah, it does have time travel in it. Well, a guy and I think, I think time travel. I think it was a good, they, 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 they did well. You did, you did well. You were in it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, and well, now uh, I'm invested. I've got to check up on you and see how you do in 12 hours. You're going to do great. I'll let you know. Well, you know, if, they, if I stop tweeting, then it's gone badly. <laughs> I'm going to take a couple of weeks. You start not, tweeting well, actually, in all consonants. I'm ho- yeah, I'm hoping I'm going to be back next week to do this. I'm talking to Jeremy Paxman next week, who's a very famous interviewer in the UK, who interviews but politicians usually. So I'm Ooh. hoping I'm going to be well enough to do that. I think I will be. I don't see I hope, I hope talking with me has, has prepped you for this. Uh, it has. It's, you know, I feel, I feel like I don't want either toes. of my testicles anymore having met you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to take that. Just, just, just take the whole thing. Just take the, I just like a smooth little nub oh. there for the whole. No. I mean, you know, who needs testicles? You've Are you going to get a lot. prosthetic testicle? <laughs> I was offered a prosthetic testicle. Were you really? And I, yeah, and I said no. I don't know why you would want that. I mean, if you want that, that's fine. But I don't know why you would. I have. I guess two. if you if you are a young man, I mean, I do a thing about. St- I do a podcast about clearing stones off a field. So this is again a stone is a testicle, and I should have just said, "Can I put a stone in there instead of?" I, I want to be made into a. I want to live forever by becoming a stone, a person made of stones. Oh, and I could I could have It'd started be like there. having a grill, but for your uh, yeah testicles. yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it's um, I'm, I'm going to just let it hang naturally. I think it might be better. They get in the way. Yeah. You've managed your whole life without having testicles. I'm presuming. Yeah, I'm making some assumptions great. there about you. It's been great um, without testicles. And you know, I think without them, I'm annoyed. I'm still going to have one. I'm annoyed. I'm still mm. going to have one. Oh, I see. Okay. But keep it me will posted. be posted. I'm going to be checking on you. I will keep. I'll keep. I know you're concerned, and uh, that's that's going to make it. Easy. I'll think of you as I as I go under. <laughs> Look, it's been. I'm a huge fan, and as I say, I've been a fan since uh, Larry Sanders. Which uh, is, if you haven't seen the Larry Sanders show, you've got to watch. Got to all of that. Get the box set of that. It's fantastic. Um, and uh, you and you, you know, you're keeping it real, Mary Lynn. You're still keeping it real. You know, you're you're a very down to earth, insane, <laughs> wonderful person. <laughs> and, Thanks uh, for having me. I do recommend the uh, the special to everyone. Do download it; uh, it's fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mary Ann Rice Cub. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Goodbye. See you next week. I hope we'll see. <laughs> Goodbye. How'd you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>